Ooh. It's a bit blurry. Hang on a minute. Let's fix that. There you go. How you doing? Hopefully you can hear us. Welcome along to our very first YouTube and Google Plus and Joymaker Hangout with the uh, Joymaker team. And I've got the very beautiful, very gorgeous <laughs> Linda joining me here for this hangout as well. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Yeah, you just are? come off live. Uh, a really good show. So anybody out there has been buying. Thank you. Excellent. It's been busy this morning. Yes, it's been busy this morning. Very busy. Brilliant. Very what have people been buying this morning? People have been buying high-end gemstones. I mean, we've had blue diamonds on, we've had sapphire, we've had ruby, we've had amazing stuff, and, and people have been there buying it. I can't wait to see what you're making. Excellent, 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 fantastic stuff. Okay, well, what we're going to do is we're going to have a question and answer session. It's not just the two of us in the room, by the way. We've got a whole team of people. Say hello, people. There they are. There they are. There they are. That's like coming in there. <laughs> a whole team of people in the room. <laughs> <laughs> it's a stardust. Be nice. <laughs> uh, what we're going to do is a question and answer session. So if you've got any questions for Linda, all you've got to do is pop them over. I think it's over there, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's over there. Pop the question over there. We'll see it here in the, uh, in the, in the depths of Evil Road Studios. And uh, we, can, we can ask the questions to Linda. I've already got a question come in, actually. Should we, should we go straight away? Hi, Linda. I have a beautiful cabochon which I'd like to use in a necklace. What is the best glue to use to attach it to an ultra suede foundation sheet? To the back of it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, okay. Yes, yeah, yeah. Good luck on the Google Hangout. I'm so looking forward to it. And that's from uh, Julie Sum, Julie Pike. Okay. So I presume that you are actually doing Sutash then. So the best glue to use when attaching, basically, what you need to attach your cabochon to is a backing foundation. Now you'll find that on the website. You'll find a small sort of A6 size and uh, an A4 size. So um, you're best to attach the cabochon to the backing foundation. The ultra suede is really as a final backing because all the work in the soutache, all the stitching and everything goes at the back as you obviously realise. Um, and then that ultra suede which comes in various colours so you can match it to your gems, you can match it to your um, soutache cords, um, is for the ultimate backing really. But if you don't have backing foundation then by all means glue it on but be very very careful that you don't, on both counts, on the foundation and on the ultra suede, be careful that you keep the glue, which is a super glue, you super glue, uh, the quick drying super glue, but be careful that you don't get the glue on the very outside edge of where the cabochon is going to sit because then once that dries, then it dry hard and you won't get your needle through. There you are. Hopefully that answered your question. I don't know if you, I'm, I'm new to jewelry making. I was asked to, to host this hangout with Linda. Um, but this is fascinating stuff. So thank you very much. And great question there, Jules. Thank you very much. If you've got any more questions, then please either pop them into Facebook, because I know we've got a lot of people at the moment watching on Facebook. Or if you use Google+, Plus, come along to Google+, Plus and pop the question in on the side. Do we have any questions from Facebook? Thank you very much. Let's have a quick look. Dearing me. Uh, OK, so oh, we've had quite a lot, actually. Uh, Tanya. Tanya Mahon, what's the best way to get started with Sutash and the best way to finish it off without looking messy? It looks amazing. Just need the confidence to expand to move to sorry to more chunky jewelry. Okay, yeah, and that's the root, isn't it? The chunky jewelry look with, with Sutash. Um, being fairly facetious, the best way to start Sutash probably is a workshop or a DVD. Okay, um, like with normal jewelry making um, or any medium that you're using, it's just very basic, basic techniques that will lead you on to more complex pieces. Um, and that's just through design then. But um, if you're wrapping um, a round gemstone, then um, keep it, don't, when you're initially starting, don't use anything bigger than a 6 mil gemstone. Um, be very careful with your stitching, keep it small. I mean, did, did, did Tanya actually ask how to do it? Or uh, what's the best way to get started? To get started. The touch. best way to get started is definitely um, look on, the, on, on YouTube. Um, and there are one or two of my shows that are on there. And I always, um, wherever stage we are with Sutash, whether it's DVD, whether it's uh, on air, um, or whether it's a, you know the mid show on air in the afternoon, I always start at the beginning anyway because uh, that 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 is the best place to start, obviously. And it's the only way with Sutash. It's the only way to start is at the beginning. So that gets quite repeated on YouTube regularly. So if you just um, 
have a look for one of those shows to show you exactly what to do. Excellent. Okay, so if you do want to head over to the uh, the Jewelry Maker YouTube channel, you know the usual address. Go on to Facebook, there's a link through to the YouTube channel on Facebook or from the website at jewelrymaker.com. Okay, I've got another question in from Zoe, Zoe Mac. Uh, what do you need to buy to get started and how do you hide the stitches? Now, I guess this is in. Okay, again, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, that's probably relative to the last question as well. What you need to buy to get started is on the website. Basically, it's the Sutash braids. You can buy any colours that you want. Um, you will need 6mm gemstones down to 2mm, so 6mm, 4mm, 3mm, 2mm. Um, backing foundation, the glue, obviously we just mentioned that, the ultra suede if you want to. The ultra suede is actually the tidying up part that you're talking about because any piece of suit ash um, you can then back. So don't worry about seeing those stitches at the back, don't worry about that sort of mess at the back um, because you will cover it taking a template of the piece and then you take that template into a uh, piece of ultra suede and then whip stitch it onto the back. So just don't worry about the mess at the back, that's not going to be seen. Excellent, thank you very much Zoe for that question. Uh, I'm going to move straight on to Margaret Ann who asks, what gemstones would you advise are best suited to use in Sutash? And uh, what's the history behind, behind this type of uh, ornamental jewellery? Right, uh, the best gemstones to use are any gemstones. <laughs> um, possibly when you're starting, stick to rounds. Um, and then, as I said just previously, don't go bigger than six mil when you're starting. Um, and you can use any flat back gemstone. Cabochons obviously don't have a hole in them, so you do glue those on. But if you've got some larger flat back gemstones, um, say on a strand or something, then you can sew those onto the backing foundation and then start the cooling around the edge. Um, the history of it goes back a long, long time. It goes back really to around about the 15th century, and that was when clothes were very, very ornate, and so braids were we were using military uniforms, any sort of regalia, and then it sort of moved into court life so that ladies' gowns were just the suitash braiding at that point. And then it's sort of come through the centuries to now. But if you look, um, it's very, very big in Eastern Europe. Huge. You can see some magnificent pieces are being made out there. And it's just infiltrating now into Britain. It's, it's big in America, and we're just getting it now. We're at the beginning of, of a, quite a new fashion in jewelry making. Excellent. Thank you very much for the question there, Margaret Ann. Um, Angela asks, what's the best way to work with large, heavy gemstones? I have many beautiful large, rough stones. Not sure how to support them often. Often the drill holes, being fun, are quite small, so you cannot use the thicker cord. Okay. Well, the beading thread that, that we sell, that comes with all the kits that you can buy independently as well, is fine. Absolutely fine. I understand what you're saying um, with the small holes in, in the rough cuts. Uh, and they do vary between stone and stone on, on, on any given strand. Um, if you're f you'll get support with the 0.38 beading thread, you'll get plenty of support for the larger gel stones. Um, if you're finding that you're struggling get, getting that through, then the monofilament, I know it looks flimsy, but it's incredibly strong. So, so try that too, and just make sure when you're finishing your ends off and you're crimping, that you put a little bit of nail varnish on that crimp, and that will hold. Excellent, I knew that. <laughs> I knew that bit. One bit I do know. Uh, okay, so Hayley asks, Hi Linda, how do you go about choosing gemstones for your boutique collections? <laughs> I'd like to steer my jewellery creations to a more high-end market, but wouldn't know where to start. Love your creations. Thank you. Okay, there's one, I mean, I've been doing boutique collections, I've been privileged enough to be able to do them this year for a long time. And um, I still use the same sort of format. I just fall in love with a strand, and that's it. And then I try and get the bridesmaids either side of it, and then the sort of congregation, if you see what I mean. But I just fall in love with a with it. It can be any gemstone, and it can be any cut. But if instinctively, like when we're on air, particularly Lucy and I, when we're on air, you know, I'll look and I go, oh, starry eyed and glassy eyed, and that means I've fallen <laughs> in love with a strand. So that's the way to do it. You, you've got to have an. A, Sort of affiliation with the gemstone, so if you do think, wow, buy it. Thanks very much for your question there, Hayley. Uh, Carol Walker asks, Hi Linda, would love to do some monochrome soutache, but I'm finding it hard to find any decent black soutache cord. What would you recommend? Will JM be getting in some soon? Yes, we will. Um, we're getting in um, a new, um, I can't say variety because it's not, but we're getting in some new Sutash cords um, very, very soon. They're going to come um, in longer lengths. 
and we, we've got more, the reason why we're doing it is, is exactly that, it's the choice of colours, we've got a wider choice of colours, so just watch this space, but if you, if you want to get started now on monochrome and you can't wait, then the very dark navy blue that we've got now on the website, that will work as well, it'll give you like a midnight look, and to be honest, if you're putting that around a black gemstone, wow, that, that, that will look fantastic, a midnight blue. Excellent. Dark Thank you very much for your question, Nicole. Uh, Julie Chadwick asks, Hi Linda, I have a beautiful cabochon which I'd like to use in a necklace. What's the best glue to use to attach uh, to an ultra suede foundation sheet to the back of it? Well, that's referring back like, to the first question. I think it is, isn't, isn't it? it? Yeah. yeah. Um, again, it's the super glue. Look on the website, we've got that. Um, I, I, I would say stick with the super glue because if you're like me, I want to get started quite quickly, and sometimes I'm thinking, um, oh, I want to do that now. Oh, I haven't glued my cabochon on. So if you're using super glue, um, it's a quick fix, and it, it really is a good fix as well. But as I said before, be very careful when you're gluing it on that you don't get the outer edge of the gemstone, the cabochon. Um, so really, when you're gluing it, go within a, uh, probably five mil of the, of the outer edge of the gemstone, and then it won't spread to the point where you put your needle through. Excellent. Well, uh, CSL Designs, it's a shameless plug, so, uh, <laughs> asks the question, I don't have a name for you, I'm afraid, CLS Designs, but I'm saying your name again. Uh, I'm just curious to how long you've been doing suit for. Okay, you want the truth. <laughs> um, I've been doing suit tash now, I started it about two years ago, and then um, I didn't do any more because I, I, I was doing some of the mediums. So, in essence, I've been doing it for two years. But having said that, I've only been really doing it for about the last five months, I would think. Um, but so, read into that that you can learn to do sutash really quickly. And what you're looking at might be really complex and it might be a little bit scary, but it's really, if you can sew a button on, you can sutash. Fantastic. There you are. Um, final question before I have to refresh this, and I don't know how to do that. Uh, <laughs> Alaya, I think that is, and I'm a lonely. Is there a type of jewellery making that you haven't tried but would want to? And if so, what is it? Um, I'd love to be able to, um, I know that there's a course here, and I, I do intend to, um, to take that course. I'd like to be able to gem set. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I would love to be able to gem set. I get quite frustrated when I see a magnificent sparkly stone, and I don't want to use wire with it, and I don't want to put it in any other way other than a claw setting. So, um, I like working with sort of 10 carat diamonds claw set. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there's a question for, no, I'm going to ask. Um, do uh, many jewellery makers at the moment, the watch jewellery maker, gem set? Um, Kirsty does a workshop here. Okay. So I think she's done a couple of them so far. On the, on the launch, I mean, everybody was, it, it, the, the whole kit sold out. Yeah. So I would think, and I would like to think, that yes, yes, there are a fair amount of our customers doing that now. I've got, I'm getting a lot of nods from around the room, yes. What was that, a DVD available? You're going to be filming a DVD, a gem setting scene. Ah, right. a DVD, a gem setting DVD Great. will be available soon. Fantastic, excellent stuff. Okay, while well, you're joining us during our first ever Google Plus live hangout here for Jewelry Maker, I'm joined by the gorgeous Linda, and we're talking uh, questions and answers. So if you have any questions, and I'm sure there's lots coming through at the moment, for Linda, uh, about Sutash, about um, shrink plastic, and of course, as we know, Linda is a beading expert as well, so if you've got any beading questions, mm -hmm. that'll be great as well. Um, either pop them onto Facebook, or if you know how to use, and you've used Google Plus quite a lot, Head on over to Google Plus and add your question in on the live Hangout. I noticed we've had a few people pop in and out on the Hangout as well with their own video cameras. If you want to be part of it, you want to be um, uh, part of the actual video broadcast as well, part of the Hangout, then please do um, come along and um, give us a wave or something from the bottom, and I'll, I'll catch your uh, hopefully I'll catch your eye, and uh, we can ask Linda the question live. As, as a face-to-face. -face. Um, okay, so Linda's our resident designer here, or one of our resident designers with Jewelry Maker, and you've been with yes, them from the beginning, really, haven't you? It's almost three years now. Yeah, yeah. Is it three or four now? Nearly yeah, it's, it's time flies. Time flies. Last year went really quickly. Um, yes, from the early heady days of recording at six o'clock because the studio was required by Jens, um, the pre-records actually being presented by Steve. So yeah, I'm a bit, a bit of a fixture room. Wow. wow. <laughs> Blimey, that's gone back quite a, quite a long way. Yeah. In fact, I'm thinking that the original Jewelry Maker Studio was, was, in Ivy House. was in Ivy House, which is another building. It's not in this building here. But 
do we make a move to this building, which is um, Eagle Way Studios? And I believe the original studio is being turned into another studio soon again, isn't it? It's crazy. It's crazy. Right, do we have any more questions from... Uh, we do, from Facebook. Fantastic. Okay, so we have a question from Faye. Faye Todd. Hi, Linda. I would be very interested in a DVD covering crochet and knitting techniques using gems. Any chance of this happening? Yes, absolutely. It says what, what you want, and we'll try and, and do it for you. But Aunt um, Sheila will fight me for that DVD. So, yes, absolutely. I think, I'm not sure. I'll, I'll double check. Um, if it's in the pipeline, Sheila, fine. Um, if it's not, then. Um, Fantastic. <laughs> Thanks very much for your question there, Faye. Uh, but as I said, if you want to post a question online onto Facebook or onto Google+, Plus, then do so by uh, just tapping it in on the question and answers section, which is here on Google+, Plus, or on Facebook in the comments section, which is just beneath the live video stream. Um, well, how's it going? Are you enjoying it? Yes, I'm, I'm absolutely really enjoying it. I really am, actually. I was quite nervous when I came in, but... Yeah, it is good. It's very, very Talking good. Talking my favourite subject. <laughs> and you're quite used to using um, the Apple thing, FaceTime. Yes, yes. FaceTime, yeah, with, yeah, with yeah, the family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 with the family. Yes. Yeah. It's, fun. it's great technology, isn't it? And you've got the chance to ask Linda any kind of question you want. Um, just do so, like I said, on Facebook or on, uh, on Google+. Plus. I can never remember which way it is. <laughs> it's over there, isn't it? It's over there. That's the way, just over there. Post the question, and we will we'll answer it uh, as fast as we can. Now, we've got some beautiful pieces of jewellery um, here in the, the, the depths of Eagle Rose Studios. Yeah, this is, um, this is a piece that was in the Boutique collection this morning. Let me move to open it. Um, and it was an exquisite collection. Uh, I think is there some of the Spinel on There isn't the Spinel on that, but within that collection, I've got the strands here. Within that collection, we had um, a strand of red Spinel. Right, oh, Which wow. we, I can't recall ever having it in the all years I've been here. Um, so we were very privileged to have that. And I've just sort of, there it is, yes. Let me have a look at that one. Yeah, there's the gym guy. Beautiful. Just look at it, it's so sparkly and it's, it's everything that you want from Red Spinel is there. Wow, that's absolutely stunning. I, now, I'm, I'm reliably informed, if I hold this quite close to the camera, you might actually see a close-up of it. But I don't know whether this is going to work or not, so we'll give it a go anyway. Let's have a quick, let's have a quick look. Hopefully, it will automatically focus. No, it's not working, is it? No, not at all. I can, however, do this, and hopefully this will remedy the situation. We'll go out of focus, but now you should see the beautiful gemstone. Oh, right. There you yes. go. Yes, look at that. Stunning, isn't it? Yes, it's amazing. Beautiful red spinel. The uh, a gemstone, which actually was... Um, let's put this back in focus there. Ah, where are you? Come back. A gemstone which actually um, was collected by the late Pope. He he was one of the world's largest collectors of this gemstone. Wow. He had one of the I don't know whether it's still there, but in the Vatican there was the the largest collection of spinel gemstones. It's a great gemstone. It's a fantastic gemstone. I mean, we we occasionally have it in its black form, but I've never seen a red before. It's the first time I've seen it. Beautiful. And that's available on the website. I think the I think the boutique sold out. Oh. But do check, do check with the call centre because there were a couple that were hovering. The last two were hovering, but I think uh, the majority definitely sold out, which is which is great because uh, people have got it. We're very lucky. Now, if you're joining this uh, live hangout, wondering who we are, this is jewelrymaker.com, and we are a jewelry making company in the UK. We broadcast all around the world on the internet and here in the UK on Sky and Freeview and Virgin and all the other different types of network. Um, if you've not visited the website before, very easy to get to, www.jewelrymaker.com. When you're there, if, you, if you're outside the UK, select your country from the drop-down list in the top right-hand corner and uh, have a look at the fantastic gemstones and jewelry making uh, kit and tools that we have on the website. And like I said a moment ago, we are absolutely surrounded by fantastic pieces of jewelry and uh, toolkit as well. Let's look at that, that. Is that the mini toolkit there? This is the small one, small yeah. Toolkit. This is the small toolkit. And um, this is the toolkit that I first had on day one, okay? And um, I run a sort of beginner's introduction into jewelry making workshop here. And um, we've done two or three of them now. And 
everybody, and I would say categorically that 95% of the ladies that come, or the guys, because I had a gentleman there at the time before, um, have never ever touch drawing and making any form. So consequently, I don't know about you, but when somebody says, well, you need tools for a certain thing, I get a bit scared. Yeah. Um, but this essentially is everything that you need to make. And it's just these pliers over here. These three pliers are the essential things for making jewelry. And yesterday, on yesterday's course, the whole of the attendees purchased this kit. Um, it's a great little kit. It's, um, it's it, Obviously, it's easy to carry around with you, etc., etc. But it, it works, which is what, what we want from um, from tools that for any hobby really, but certainly for jewelry making, um, it, it works, and you will end up with uh, whatever it is that you're hoping to make using those tools. Fantastic, excellent! It does look fantastic. Um, now what have we got? We've got long. I don't. We've know. got round nose pliers. Round nose pliers, essentially for making loops. Yeah. And then we've got the flat nose pliers, which are really easy to acts as another pair of hands, to be honest. Because yeah. you can, if you're using pliers, you've got more um, turnability, as it were, in the wrist. So okay. now yeah. it, it just the hand takes over and it's much better. And then um, there's the cutters, which obviously you need to trim back um, with wire. And, uh, those are the snippers. Oh, sorry. Those are called snippers, yes. Sorry, they're, they're the cutters. Yeah, I, sh I should know that from my. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, those are the snippers if you're using ribbon or whatever, but the, the, the cutters um, there in the centre there of, of, of the tools are essential for trimming off any of your findings or certainly cutting the beading thread because that's the stainless steel beading thread. Excellent. Um, we've noticed we've got a few people that joined this hangout. If anyone's got a question, give us a wave <laughs> and uh, we'll, bring your, uh, we'll bring your camera and microphone live. Um, and like I said, if you have any questions, uh, online, then oh, I think we do have a question over here somewhere. Who's that? Let's have a look. Let's click over here. I believe that's uh, Kenneth. Kenneth. Oh, hello. Hello Hi, there, Kenneth. Kenneth. Hi. Hi. Um, it's not a question actually. I I um had the resin starter kit last week. You still there? Yeah, yeah I'm still here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I had the resin starter kit last week, and it's just a just a little tip. Really. Brilliant, yeah, okay. Really? Um, I've been doing some experimenting. Just so I've been doing some experimenting. Yep. And these cheap silicon moulds you, you, you get for chocolates and things, when you cast into them, you get um, they're like a frosted finish. Right. I found out that if you let it go hard and rub it with tea cut, Yes. Or other, or another car restoring. It does restore the gloss. It gets rid of the frostiness. All right, that's great. That is Kenneth, because it's great to have these little top tips. It really yeah. Uh, just, I, I must say, I've only been doing it for a week. Um, just, I'm still experimenting with it. Are you enjoying it? Yes, very much, very much. Addictive. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll take some photos. I'll try and put them on to. Um, Please do, yeah. Onto an email to change as it was before I started rubbing it with the uh, cutting paste. Yes, do do before and after. That's that's great. Yeah, that's what excellent. What to do? Yeah, it's difficult to photograph though. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I do try. Thanks, Ken. Thanks, Thanks very much. Thanks very much. Thank you. Time. Bye. Thank you. Bye. I'll just put you on mute there, Kenneth. Um, one second. There you go. So, thank you very much, Kenneth. Great, great to have uh, live video questions coming in as well. If you want to do exactly the same as what Kenneth's done there, then uh, switch your, your webcam on if you've got a, a laptop and pop on over to Google Plus and you can ask the questions. Hopefully, this will become more and more of a uh, maybe a weekly or fortnightly feature with uh, Joy Maker. Now, loads of questions coming in via Facebook. I knew that would happen. Karen, Linda, Joy Maker always say it's a family run business. Are you part of the family? <laughs> yes. I am actually. Um, Steve, one of the owners of the company, um, his wife Sarah is, if you know Sheila here, it's a bit of a, a long way down to, to tell you exactly where I fit in, but Sarah, who's the co-owner of the, of the company, her mother is Sheila, who also works here as a resident designer, and I'm Sheila's cousin. So effectively, I'm Steve's second cousin-in-law, if that, yeah. you can work that one out. 
Yeah. Cool. Okay, we've got a question coming in from uh, who's this? It's Maria. Hi, Linda. I'm Maria from Hungary. Hello, Maria. Oh, How are you doing? Hi. I'd like to ask for delivery to Hungary. Hmm. I'm not entirely sure at the moment. Well, we can find out. We will find out yeah, for you, though, we'll Maria. Find out. Okay. Thank you very much for your question. We will get back to you there, Maria. Thank you. Uh, next question coming in from Facebook is Laura. Which gemstone do you like the best? Oh gosh, that's the big question, isn't it? Um, I suppose for its gemstone sort of properties, and it's the gemstone I can't say. Uh, I can't. I can't pronounce Which one? it. <laughs> Lab. Labradorite. That's the one. Labradorite. Yeah. I think it has to be that. That was voted two years running the top gemstone for jewelry maker yes. anyway. But I think it's it, it's just got so much going for it for a jewelry maker. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's got a lot of. If you get into jewelry making with gemstones, you will also buy as a byproduct get into gemstones too. That's what happened to me. I, I'm, I'm really into gemstones now, and every time I see um, gemstones. Cut differently, and it's like I get excited. But I think Labradorite, I have to break it up, uh, <laughs> otherwise, I'll just get tongue twisted. Um, I think if I have to have, if you're making me have a favourite, that's the one. Brilliant. Hope that answers your question, Laura. Uh, it's a great gemstone, it really oh, it's is. It's when he catches the light yeah, the shiller, and you, the shiller yeah. becomes off. It's electric blue as well, which is gorgeous. But the bit I also like is when you get the other angle and you get the gold, the gold, the gold yeah, speckles. Absolutely. It really looks like the night sky. It's yeah, absolutely amazing. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing about gemstones. You just can't stop looking at them for their varying sort of characteristics, really. Excellent. Sam asks, uh, of which of the shows do you prefer, the morning or the mid show? Um, I enjoy doing both of them, to be honest. Um, I enjoy the mid-show because we get a little bit more time and we can go from start to finish perhaps on a project. But again, if you're making me choose, um, I absolutely love the morning show. I really do. I like the fast pace and um, it's, you know, that's the thing with live TV and shopping TV in particular is that you never know quite what's going to happen and you know we have fits of giggles and everything but I really do enjoy the morning show I like the pace of it and I like to have to rush my kicks out and think wow did I do that in that amount of time so it is the morning show closely followed by the mission. Uh, I'm very cautious of the time actually are we allowed to go over a little bit is that all right yeah we'll go over, <laughs> we'll go over a little bit I've got a chat message coming in here I've not seen one of these uh, oh, it's, uh, it's it's one of our colleagues has joined in. Uh, okay, so Sarah asks, can you tell us any JM secrets? Ooh, any JM secrets? I don't think I can on my TV, to be honest. <laughs> um, you see, I've got loads of them, but I think live TV isn't the place to Not share them. Really. <laughs> um, have I got to be any? I've. I look after the, the, the website kind of side of jewelry maker business. How do I have any things coming up that maybe? Well, you see, this is it. There's something between a secret and um, sort of having your fingernails pulled out type of thing as well, isn't it? <laughs> I can tell you one so, secret. We'll probably be more having more Google <laughs> yeah. uh, Hangouts. So there you are. Louise, what has been your favourite piece of jewelry that, uh, that you've made? Okay, I have got a favourite, and I'm glad that question came in because I, I tend to do things that are quite heavy on gemstone, um, and obviously in kits and things I have to use different gemstones together. But my all-time favourite piece was a three-stranded drop, all citrine, faceted citrine necklace with um, gold-plated silver chain, and um, that one pops into my head all the time when I'm thinking about the pieces I've made. And I worked out the other day; I think I've made roughly about eight and a half thousand pieces wow. now. But um, but this citrine, there's something about citrine um, that is almost nudging lab out the way, <laughs> just just a smidge. <laughs> I've just found another section of questions, here, so I don't know where they've come from. Angela Finch says, "What uh, what's the discipline you would most like to learn?" Well, I think definitely that the gem setting. Um, but you know, a bit like Kenneth said earlier, I would like to um, spend a little bit more time in the various. I'd like a little bit of every medium, so okay. that I could literally come on a show and, and nothing would phase me. Um, but it's it's just time more than anything. But 
I suppose think that gem setting thing is the thing. Although I have done some silver clay, I have done some silver clay on that, and I thoroughly enjoyed that. That is something that is very rewarding to do. Brilliant. You know, changing something into a, a, a piece of clay, changing that into a fun, fabulous piece of a very sort of high end silver. That, that the, the transformation yeah, between it's amazing. something yeah. malleable and yeah. then something which is it's 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 like the ugly duckling, duckling really, isn't it? It's that sort of story oh, where no, it starts good. off. And then it turns into this fantastic smile. Oh. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Well, thank you very, very much for joining us here. There are just a couple of uh, Q&A answers we need to give. And of course, that was from Maria over there in Hungary. Uh, oh, hang on, we've got one more from Maria, actually. Hi, Maria from Hungary. Gem Art Pot, will it be available on sale soon? Gem Art Pot. Pot. We've got any gem art. The melting pot. Yes, I think it's scheduled sometime this week. Isn't we it? believe it's scheduled for the television show sometime this yeah, week. Yeah, in the next ten days. In the next ten days. So I'm afraid you'll have to keep your eyes open there, um, Maria. Okay. I think that's it. Wow. That I think that, that, that went very, very <laughs> quickly. Hopefully, you've enjoyed uh, this Google Hangout. Thank you very much. For coming and asking your questions, and of course, thank you very much to Kenneth over there. We didn't find out where you were, Kenneth. Um, Kenneth, are you still there? Oh, I need to unmute you now, don't I? <laughs> oh, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> there you are. Okay, well, it's great to see you, Kenneth. And um, if you want to join Kenneth, Kenneth next time, we'll let you know when the next Google Hangout will be. And uh, just make sure your camera's on and your microphone's uh, plugged in and everything. And you can ask. Maybe Linda, maybe someone else, who knows? Uh, a question about jewelry making next time. If you joined late into this video and you think, oh, I've missed it, don't worry, it will be available to rewatch on YouTube, okay? And we'll post the links on Google Plus and on Facebook as well. Thanks very much, Linda. Thank you very much. It's great. Absolutely brilliant. Good, it? Very good. Because it doesn't know anything about joy making. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, and thanks very much for the team. Um, oh, I've just been told, by the way, Maria, we're not delivering to Hungary, but we will be very soon. Okay, I don't have a date for you, I'm afraid, but we will be very soon. Thanks very much for joining us, and um, keep your eyes peeled for the next Jewelry Maker live hangout. Cheerio.